then we come to our third law which is Wien's displacement law so Wien's displacement law is just an observation from Planck's uh, from Planck's radiation law itself where Planck's radiation law uh, for a given temperature you will construct this curve so for a given temperature you will construct this curve so if you this is my t1 now what will happen if i change my temperature so if i change my temperature let's say this peak might shift so how how this peak is shifting so now we'll be tracing only the peak only this peak wavelength so the wavelength this wave lambda man will call it lambda max so wherever you see this peak the corresponding wavelength will be called lambda max so this Wien's displacement law will tell you how is this wavelength at which you are getting peak intensity how does it vary as you change the temperature what it say as temperature increases the total amount of radiant energy increases so this is what you go get by so total amount of radiant energy increases this is what you get by Stephen Boltzmann law that it is equal to or it is proportional to temp fourth power of temperature so as temperature increases total amount of radiant flux increases but what Wien's displacement law specifically says is that the radiant energy peak shifts to shorter wavelength so if you increase temperature the wavelength at which you give maximum intensity it becomes smaller or frequency increases frequency max so the frequency at which you get maximum intensity it increases so it has a very simple relation that lambda max is inversely proportional to temperature so it is not saying like it is here we are dealing dealing only with lambda max which is lambda at the peak intensity so how is it changing with temperature so if your temperature is increasing lambda max is decreasing and in this case this if you remove this uh, proportionality sign if you want to remove this proportionality sign you can write lambda max equals b by t and again remember t has to be in kelvin in kelvin and b has a value which is this you don't need to remember this constant if you are given a question this constant value will be provided to you now how do you interpret this in a curve so you see here uh, at 200 degrees something as 200 degrees celsius so your planck radiation law will tell you it's it will give you this type of curve if your temperature is 300 it will this curve will change so your as, as your temperature is increasing this curve is changing and another thing that you see is area under under the curve is increasing so area as you saw area gives you total energy or radiant flux total radiant flux so it is area is also increasing another thing that is happening is if you tra trace this trace this peak here so this peak intensity so i'm just going to so lambda at which you have you are getting peak intensity it is also shifting so all these yellow dots here mark the peaks of these curves so how is it shifting it is shifting something like this so that is why temperature or lambda max in let's say is inversely proportional to temperature and this is this relation b by t equals b by t and if you remember these curves look something like this so you get this curve so this if you have x this is y this is curve for 1 by x so it looks very similar so instead of x you have temperature here so you have an inverse relation now uh, how can you understand it with a real world example or real life example to do that uh, uh, let, let, let me give you an example uh, let's say you have different types of objects in your in your home uh, let's say you are heating vessels on a pan let's say this is your iron vessel you heat it up on a pan and it, it will get warm after some time another type that you see are those electric heaters i don't know if all of you have seen those but they give out reddish or orangish type of light and then there are another which are tungsten bulbs or the light bulbs that you use at home and these emit yellow light 
this is red here so these are i would say heating filaments which are used for heating purposes and these are i would say tungsten or in candescent lamps they will go at certain temperature uh, and also like flame that you have on fire sometimes you will see flame is usually yellow colored and then you have this vessel which is warm but it emits no visible radiation but it appears warm if you go close it will appear warm because uh, it is still emitting infrared radiation i r so now i want you to arrange these in case of increasing temperature so let's see where you so let's let's say this has temperature t1 and it is not emitting any light this is t2 and finally you have t3 so which we, what is the relation between temperature 1 temperature 2 and temperature 3 let's say it is emitting uh, infrared and i'll write it in black same color so that i'm using infrared uh, this uh, heating filament it is emitting in let's say it is still giving out in red and this uh, tungsten lamp it is giving yellow radiation so temperature of this so this pan which is not so uh, which is not completely heated up it, it is it has a temperature less than t2 heating filament and this has a temperature which is less than t3 this tungsten lamp so heating filament temperature t1 uh, not heating filament like we are talking about the pan heating filament and bulb so temperature is increasing what what is happening to the color of light here you get infrared here you in in this case you are getting reddish and in the final case you are getting yellowish so what is happening to lambda so infrared has lambda more than uh, the red light which is more than yellow light so you see there is inverse relation between temperature and between temperature and wavelength and here uh, for remote sensing purposes if you look here so these are the examples so earth the radiation of earth is within this region so for earth the peak intensity is occurring at around close to 10 micrometers this is not in this is not in the visible radiation there is you see there is no radiation emitted by earth within the visible region so nothing less than let's say around 4 micrometers so that is the minimum uh, so that that is the minimum wavelength earth is emitting so that is why you cannot see objects in the night because the radiation that earth is emitting is outside the visible region now black body radiation curve of incandescent lamp so the lamp that you use at home or let's say electric bulb that you use at home its temperature is around 3000 degree celsius so earth's temperature is 300 degree celsius so this peak will shift to so this as temperature higher so peak will lambda max will decrease so for the light bulb that you use home at home it emits in near infrared so short it emits in near infrared region but you see there is still some emission there is still some emission within the visible region so that is why it works so that is why you can use it at homes to 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 give light to your room but again you see there is a lot of wastage also so all this radiation how do you get this radiation because you are using electricity you are consuming so you are not using this for visibility purposes so the purpose of bulb is not to heat but it is to provide light but it is providing a lot extra than it is emitting so that is why bulbs have they will be 100 watt bulb or 60 watt bulb and that is why uh, people say that you should switch from bulbs to fluorescent or leds because if the bulbs they they waste a lot of energy within this regions higher and lower energies and leds if you have led you can design an led to emit only a particular wavelength of light so means displacement law i just studied 
so we already studied atmospheric windows and now we will uh, we will sort of like super impose what we learned in this chapter and what we learned in previous chapters of atmospheric windows so you need source of radiation some source of radiation so most common is sun and after that if you are doing thermal infrared it is earth so in case of sun you see earth temperature is 300 kelvin whereas sun's temperature surface temperature is approximately i would say 6000 kelvin so that is a peak intensity shifts in this direction so wavelength lambda max decreases and sun is emitting mostly in this region visible region so this visible region sun is emitting whereas earth is emitting mostly in this infrared region so this is mid wave infrared but it is also emitting in this far infrared region now what is happening here let's see what 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 part of it is transmitted so the transmitted part is this one so everything here so you have transmission percent in here so this part is all transmitted and the part which is blocked is this one so this everything is blocked all this part is blocked so you see now combination of these so where you have the source radiation and where atmospheric windows work where atmosphere will allow you to transmit that radiation combination of these will give you will give will provide you the bands in which you can carry out remote sensing now luckily for us sun emits mostly invisible light and there is an atmospheric window within visible radiation so that visible light can pass through atmosphere so that is why light can pass through atmosphere is transparent to light now earth also is emitting in this mid infrared region and you again see an atmospheric window in this region but if you look at these far infrared radiation these ones they are all blocked and this is what is causing your greenhouse effect guys greenhouse effect see how how is greenhouse effect caused caused so the radiation which sun is emitting so sun is emitting this radiation it is allowed to pass but a lot of radiation that earth is emitting it is blocked so that is why sun's radiation can pass through the atmosphere but when earth is re-emitting it back it is blocked and you get greenhouse effect